12 News at 10 with Mark Curtis and Caribe Devine starts now. We begin tonight in Peoria where police are investigating a case of teen violence after they say a girl was hurt in an ambush attack at a park. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us for 12 News at 10. I'm Kariba Devine. I'm Mark Curtis. Police say the attack happened over the weekend near Lake Pleasant Parkway and Joe Max Road. 12 News journalist Gabriella Becerra is live at the Peoria Police Department tonight with new details on what happened. Gabby. Well, Mark Caribe, Peoria police tell us a group of teens devised a plan to attack the girl. Three of those teens have been arrested so far, but police say it wouldn't have happened without the help of one person. 18 year old Christian McCarthy in front of a judge for the first time. Christian McCarthy. He's facing several charges, including disorderly conduct after allegedly coordinating a violent attack on a teen girl. Court records obtained by 12 News reveal McCarthy brought the victim to a park near Lake Pleasant Parkway and Joe Max Road, where other teens waited to attack her. When the victim got out of the car, the teens allegedly surrounded her, punching and kicking her until she was lying motionless on the ground. Police say the attack wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for McCarthy, who recorded the incident on his cell phone and could be heard encouraging the others. I spoke with McCarthy's mother Monday afternoon. It's just, I don't know. He's in jail, he's 18, and he's in trouble. She tells me she spoke with her son several times from jail, but doesn't know what happened. Why don't you do the real stuff that's really happening that's destroying America? And well, this is part of it, is a dang... Whatever. Advocates against teen violence say it is an issue impacting families valley and nationwide. It's everywhere. There is a lot of fear um, and I don't see it dying down anytime soon because there's really no repercussions. Shannon Hayes says it's going to take the whole community, parents, educators and the teens to figure out a solution. Um, and we've got to be talking to the kids to find out what really is the issue what the issues are, what their challenges are, what they see can be the solution. And Gabby, how is the victim doing now in terms of her recovery? And um, is there any word on a possible motive behind this attack? Well, court records reveal that the attack could have been motivated by past incidents that happened within this friend group. As far as the victim, she had been taken to the hospital with minor head injuries. She's expected to be OK. Reporting live in Peoria, Gabriella Becerra, 12 News. Gabby, thanks. Tonight, the family of 22 year old Gila River police officer Joshua Breeze had to say goodbye to their son who was killed in the line of duty over the weekend. Earlier tonight, Officer Breeze was escorted from Phoenix to a cemetery in Chandler. He was shot and killed after responding to an out-of-control party early Saturday morning in Santan on the Gila River Indian community. He had been with the department for less than a year. These times are so tough for the law enforcement community, but I also think that it highlights the commitment and the sacrifice that our law, enfor law enforcement officers make on a regular basis. Meanwhile, tonight we've learned the identity of the second person killed in that shooting. Gila River Indian Community Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis says 23-year-old Allison Apcaw died from her injuries. As for the suspects, tonight two people, an adult and a minor, are in custody. The FBI says they're still in the hospital receiving care. Our hearts go out to Officer Breeze's family and the Gila River Police Department. Turning now to the very latest on several wildfires that are burning along State Route 87 north of the valley. Starting with the Adams fire that broke out yesterday, it's burned more than 5,000 acres so far and at one point forced a pre-evacuation warning for the Goldfield Ranch community. Now that warning has since been lifted. Officials say that this fire is human caused. Meanwhile, the Catahoula fire broke out earlier today along State Route 87. That fire is now 120 acres and is 10% contained. The fire had closed the northbound lanes of State Route 87, but those have reopened just as of 6 p.m. this evening. Right now, the cause of that fire is still under investigation.
And all throughout fire season, 12 News is dedicated to keeping you informed. You can scan the QR code that you see there on the right side of your screen. You can find the very latest information on wildfires all season long. And you can also find details by going to 12news.com slash wildfires. Well, the summer heat is back with a vengeance. In fact, you can still feel it out there even tonight. We're looking at 110 and likely the one teens by midweek with heat advisories expected to take effect starting Wednesday. Meteorologist Lindsay Riley is here with a first look at your forecast and Lindsay, are we going to break any records? We are going to break some records on Thursday. That'll be our best chance. Now Wednesday we start to get up to 110. That'll be the first time this year and about one week early compared to the average. By the time we get to Thursday, we increase to 113 degrees. That beats the old record by two degrees. Another 113 degree day Friday, which is two degrees shy of the record, and then we drop below one. 10 heading into the weekend. So a very hot stretch, the hottest stretch of the year. Even up in the high country, it's going to be tough to beat the heat. Flagstaff getting close to 90 degrees on Thursday. We'll see 90s in the White Mountains, our first triple digits of the year in Sedona, and mid 90s Wednesday and Thursday along the rim. We topped out at 103 today, two degrees above the average. We're still at 92, and the temperatures start to go up tomorrow. More on on that forecast in just a few minutes, Karibe. All right, Lindsay, thank you. Tonight, the aviation community is mourning the loss of a beloved pilot who lived here in the valley who died while on a layover. Keith Duncan was a jet blue pilot and he lost his life in a snorkeling accident in the Caribbean. 12 News journalist Bianca Bono is joining us live in studio and she sat down with his friends and family today and Bianca, they have to just be in disbelief. It's so hard to wrap your mind around what his family is going through and guys, I also spoke to his two children, the two children that Keith Duncan has left behind. They're 19 and 17 years old and they were raised by their single father. Now they're finding the strength to keep moving forward while keeping their father's legacy alive. And this is a story you'll only see here on 12 News. Hawaii and Jamaica. At just 19 and 17 years old, Theo and Tara Duncan have seen the world. He was always like, come on, you know, push yourself. You got to go outside your box. You got to try new things. It's all because of their dad, Keith Duncan, a single father whose zest for life was contagious. He was really all about traveling the world and living life to the fullest. Duncan was a helicopter pilot with the Army, ultimately flying for JetBlue, skydiving, scuba diving, hiking or skiing on his days off. A proud pilot, but an even prouder dad. Everything kind of happened so fast in the beginning that you don't really have any time to process what's going on. In March, while on a layover on the island of Curacao with his girlfriend, Duncan was snorkeling. An accident happened, and within minutes, he had drowned. His son studying in his dorm in his first year at ASU when he got the news. I was out of the dorm just like that. I was walking the street. I was trying to get an Uber, a taxi, get somewhere closer to my sister. Tara in Tucson for a model UN class trip. The phone call from Theo was paralyzing. You know, he's he's telling me he's trying to trying to like break the news slowly. Um, and it yeah, like he said, it's kind of just like everything sort of froze. Their father and superhero died thousands of miles away while they were in Phoenix with no family that they knew of. It didn't seem real. It's still hard to this day, actually, to, to think about. Douglas Taylor is a pilot, too, and part of Duncan's aviation family. News of his sudden death sending shockwaves through the community. Austin to Austria, there was people around the world that had interacted with Keith um, that came out of, came out of uh, basically the woodwork to help us out. He was a superhero. To Jake Cummins, raised by his mom, Duncan was a father figure. He had such a big impact on his community. Now that community is rallying around Theo and Tara, left to deal with documents and legal and financial challenges associated with losing a life in a foreign country, all on top of their own unimaginable grief. Just trying to do exactly what I thought 
she'd be proud of. So they're pushing forward. As Theo continues to study computer science at ASU and Tara goes into her senior year of high school with dreams of becoming a doctor, they're sharing their father's adventurous life with the world, carrying his superhero spirit with them every step of the way. He did a lot more than a lot of other people would do in their entire lifespan, and I think that's really something to focus on when looking back at things. Just amazing the strength those two kids have been showing. And Douglas Taylor has set up a GoFundMe page to help Tara and Theo move forward. You can find a link to donate right now on our website, 12news.com. We're live in studio, Bianca Bono, 12 News. All right, Bianca, thank you.